Hello, this is Harker to Bean, and today we are going to be tumbling. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. I forgot I don't need to say anything else. It's so funny that spaghetti westerns are called that because they were directed at Italians. Imagine if people started calling Marvel movies hamburger shonen. We could, we should just do that. We can just do that. <laughs> oh. Bad eyesight moment. Burning Man 2023 explained. Burning Man is a festival for rich white people who want to smoke weed and trip acid in the Nevada desert and pretend they're, they're one with the earth. It's not a musical festival or anything that serves any purpose, it's just vibes. A hundred year flash flood just hit Nevada, including where Burning Man is being held this very weekend. Dry desert ground can't suddenly absorb water, let alone that much water all at once. So now Burning Man is a giant mud pit with thick, deep mud. No, we can get in or out, so they close all the roads. FEMA just told the 73,000 people surrounded, surrounded at Burning Man to shelter or in place, ration food and water. And essentially, you're on your own. Good luck! The porta potties are overflowing into the mud and they're all walking around. And then, the official CDC Twitter account tweeted and then deleted that there was a confirmed Ebola outbreak at Burning Man, but people are pretty sure it's just French illness, like actual. Oh, World War One trench, il trench, trench il illnesses. Why can I not pronounce that word? Earlier this week, climate activists protested against Burning Man, and all the attendees drove right past them and yelled at them and tried to get them arrested, etc. There is a private a jet at Burning Man where people can join the Mile High Club. It just takes off and lands all day, and lets people all screw in it. No word yet, and on the you fuck plane's current status or location. And lastly, when the ground here gets wet, the sea monkeys hatch. I don't know what that last one really means, but it kind of scares me. A few days ago, I was walking past a basketball court and a ball flew at me and I 1. Didn't flinch 2. Caught the ball 3. Threw it back at the guy 4. Respond to his thanks bro with a nod It was like the ghost of some guy named Chad took over me so I didn't like embarrass myself a bro talked to me today and it caught me very off guard, but instead of my voice rising an octave, it dropped an octave and I suddenly was speaking, was effortlessly speaking bro TM back to him, and this resulted in a very positive interaction. Thanks Chad. Reblog to be possessed by good ghost Chad in your hour of need. And God gave the beast kings gifts that they might share with their people. To the wolf, God gave ripping teeth and the law of the pack. 
to the bear, God gave crushing jaws and terrible strength. To the falcon, God gave slicing talons and great sight. And to the shrimp, God gave the concussive plasma cannon. That one's a little bit stronger than the others. Laptop overheating, pour water on it to cool it down. I trusted you. Do not trust people like me. I will take you to museums, parks, and monuments, and kiss you in every beautiful place so you can never go back to them without tasting me like blood in your mouth. I will destroy you in the most beautiful way possible. And when I leave you, who will finally understand why storms are named after people? Holy crap. It's kind of beautiful, but also terrifying. <sighs> CVS Pharmacy is in a castle. <laughs> Something evil is afoot in East LA. Dark CVS. Show me the evil 3 a.m. cold medicine run. Hello, welcome to CVS Pharmacy. Are you dropping off a prescription or picking up? <laughs> Dracula. Hello, welcome to CVS Pharmacy. Dropping off a prescription or picking up? Dang. <sighs> Somebody should seriously make a movie about all the crazy stuff that happens here. We'll genetically modify anything for the right price. If one of these dinosaurs kills me, I'll freaking kill him. Adding more birds. There's so many. We found an old human kid living in one of the exhibits. It seems like the dinosaurs are letting her live if here. What should we do? Something rather vibe is super earth threatening and the dinosaurs respect her, so we are leaving the situation alone. Fuck it, making a werewolf. You is kind. You is smart. You is important. I'm so lonely. Do you guys think God is pissed at us? I don't know if I want to say this one. It's something night at the park tomorrow. Bring your wife and her boyfriend gets in free. I don't know if I can say that word, so I'm just going to skip it. Whew. <sighs> Hey, weird question, but what happens if you put two reasonably likable anthropologists of wildly different cultures together in the same room? Do they study each other? Can they? Is it like an instant into conversational or feedback loop? I imagine two dogs eternally sniffing each other's butts at the park. No, Sue, yes. This one, I'm wondering if I'll get political or not, given the title. Like, I can't actually read the post, but the title is scaring me a little.
There we go. Now we can read it. Um, gee, you have to watch this show. It is literally the best thing I've ever seen. I am talking the absolute best writing, pacing, artwork, storytelling, etc. That has ever graced the screen. <laughs> cool, what is it? Peppa Pig. Endless Pit. Just walk in it. Getting show recommendations for people on Tumblr. I guarantee that the person OP is mocking was actually talking about Bluey, and OP is a freaking fool for dismissing them. I'm serious. Bluey has displayed more depth and new perceptions on approaching life than what 99% of adult programming has to offer. I just need to watch that. It has been over a year. I do not know what Bluey was before I made this post. I am not going to watch Bluey because of responses on this post. Also, I want to let you all you guys know that Bob the Builder chooses all important lessons about construction equipment in a way no other show does. They get far more meaningful and important than what 99% of avid adult programming has to offer. Can we fix it? Yes we can, says Bob the Builder, an inspiring message and one far more meaningful for our times than any tragedy you, Shakespeare, could ever write. I'm at the point where I'm not really sure if Bob the Miller is right, especially about the world. Well, you're welcome to try. One tectonic plate approaching another. So, are you a top or a bottom? Two tops, you get a mountain. Two bottoms, valley, bro. I don't know anything about geology. They could still call the app Grinder. Are you MG? Magnesium M M um iron two plus two times magnesium iron two plus fifty five I eight O two two O H Ohio two. I had to Google that and I swear to frick I will I'll kill you. Coming tonight. I. Hate that. Oh my goodness. Okay, that was too funny. Would you let Yamato use the men's bathroom? What kind of question is that? Is this guy a Republican lawmaker or something? That's a good question. Entomologists are the most freaking wild people I've ever met. I pointed out a, a cool wasp one and she picked it up with her bare hands and started showing me different features she was using to identify this, the species. On a walk with another one, he just paused her and violently shoved his hand into some... Um, rotting wood and offered me a tunnel web spider or like, oh, okay, I guess. Entomologists just wake up every day, give zero fricks, and are insane for 12 hours and then collapse. When I was in college, I did LARP I've chain. One of the guys in the group was an entomology student, and I once watched him drop directly in into a playing position in the middle of a sword fight to look at a moth on the ground. Okay, I think that there are some really crazy people, and they seem to study bugs. Actually, that tracks. I never noticed how strong that penguin's brain get it is. The penguin.
That's a raccoon. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's a penguin. Why do 90% of all medicines sound like cool wizard names? It is I, Zertek the Almighty. You are no match for Xenix the Wise. Viagra. <laughs> That's too good. What the heck? <sighs> the the artist. Oh man, that guy's cake is way better than mine. The audience. Holy crap! Two cakes. People have written a lot of touchy feely pieces on the subject, but I thought I'd get right to the heart of the matter. This is one thousand percent more motivating than every preachy real writers write every day post on all of Tumblr. How is it possible to love fictional characters this much? And also, have people always been this way? Like, did Queen Elizabeth lie in bed late some, sometimes thinking, Verily, I could not even... And, and the former Arcutio had slain me, he with feels. But these are like, it too, Odysseus. Sometimes I wonder. Oh. Chapter have updated. Oh, ye gods, I thought not even, and if he, he had given me a cliff to hang on, I shall disembowel him. Oh my god. The answer is yes, they did. There's a lot of research about the highly emotional reactions to the first novels by Levi Avon Friend. Here's the thing, the printing press was invented in 1450, and whilst it was re revolutionary, it wasn't very good. But then it got better over time, and by the 16th century, there were publications, novels, scientific journals, folios, pamphlets, and newspapers all over Europe. At first, most were educational or theological, or reprints of classical works. However, novels gained in popularity as basically what most people wanted was to read for pleasure. They became salacious, extremely dramatic, with tragic heroines and doomed love and flawed heroes. See classical literature only more extreme. Books in the form of letters were are common. Sensationalism, I don't know what it says next because I have read the thingy. The sensationalism was, was part of the course and apparently used to teach moral lessons. There was also a lot of erotica floating around. But here's the thing, due to the greater availability of literature and the rise of comfy furniture, I do not as an actual historical fact, the 16th and 17th century was when beds and chairs got comfy. People started reading novels for pleasure, women especially, as these novels were highly emotional, but they too became highly emotional. There are lots of contemporary reports of young women, and especially fainting, and having hysterics or crying fits lasting for days due to the death of a character, or their OTEPs doomed love. They became insensible over books and characters, and were very vocal about it. Men weren't immune. There is a long letter a middle-aged man wrote to the author of his favorite work based saying that the novel's too sad. He can't handle all his feels. If they don't get together, he won't be excuse me, able to go on. And his heart is already broken at the hero its tragic state. I don't know what I I R C really means. Conservatives at the time were seriously worried about the effects of literature on people's mental health. Of course they would. Conservatives wanted to blame everything in, in on media. Doesn't even matter that this was in the 16th century, they are still doing it. Oh, we were more violent. 
and because of video games, they're not like like we literally made a freaking a culture about being violent. Anyway, conservatives at the time were seriously worried about the effects of literature on people's mental health and damaging to both morals and society. Always morals. That's subjective. So basically, yes, it is exactly like what happens on Tumblr when we cry over attractive British men. Only my hysterical theory get me is that their emotions were even more intense as they hadn't had a life of sensationalist media to numb the pain of them beforehand in the same way we do. Or did they have the giant group's therapy set? Nor did they have the giant group therapy session that is Tumblr. Don't get even get me started on the classical slash early medieval it's in their boners for the Iliad. I will be here all week. Suffice to say, the members of the Byzantine team court use homework puns instead of talking normally to each other if someone who hadn't studied these classics was in the room. They had dickish fandom in jokes. Boom. I need to know this. See, we're all just the current steps in a time-honored our tradition, and this post is good to read along with affection. Actually, is post this week about old school fandom and history and stuff. Ancient Iliad fandom is intense. Alexander the Great and his boyfriend totally RP'd Archelaus and, and Patroclus. Alexander shipped that hard. It's possible that this story is apocryphal, but that would just mean in that ancient historians were writing RPs about Alexander and Hef Hesian RP in Iliad slash. And honestly, that's just as good. And then there's this gem from Plato. Oh, this is gonna get good. Very different was the reward of the true love of Achilles toward, or it's his lover Patroclus. His lover and not his love. The notion that Patroclus was a beloved one is a foolish error into which it is has fallen for Achilles was the sort of the fairer of the two who fairer. Also, well, than all the other heroes, as Homer informs us, he was still beardless and younger far. Symposium. That's right. 4th century BC arguments about who talked. Nahil Novi Sub Soul, my friends. Warn this glorious subject for people who know way more than I do. We're almost done with this post. We're almost done. Man, I love this post. And to add to my personal favorite story, after reading Samuel Richardson's Clarissa in the 18th century, Elizabeth Eklund decided that she was not happy with the ending and basically wrote her own fix-it fic. No one dies, and Lovelace, the villain, was totally reformed and became a super nice guy. It's completely out of character and incredibly poorly written, and it's beautiful. And so many women fell in love with the villain Left Lace and wrote to Richardson about it. They kept adding new bits with each edition to highlight what a hideous person Left Lace was. So it's almost unsurprising that reading novels in this period of work was actually considered dangerous because it gave women unrealistic ideas about men and made them um, easier prey for rakes? They're running from rakes? Like literally just the things you use to rake up leaves? Okay. Basically, I want my own Christian Grey has been a thing for hundreds of years. Also, a thing in physic, or, uh, fix it, or everyone lives AUs at various points in time, but especially in the mid 1800s, early 1900s, aka roughly Victorian, and then there were periods of this earlier as well. A huge thing was to fix Shakespeare, as well as most theater and novels, to be in line with current morality. Good characters live, bad characters are terribly punished, but not, you know, gruesomely, because what would the ladies think? So you have, like, productions of King Blair where Cordelia lives, and so do... Oh, Reagan and Angon Earl, but they're very sorry. Man, that was a long one. Oh no, this is gonna be funny. In Donald Trump's mugshot, taking out the faulted 
In County Jail, on Thursday, he's looking straight into camera. His platinum blonde con candy wisp of hair shimmers in the harsh jail light lighting. His eyes are locked in the hard stare. His mouth is flattened in the grimace instead of smiling like some of his co-defendants. He appears to be scowling. Why is it typed like a fanfic? He's about to get sold to One Direction. Also, I'm gonna say this right now. The mugshot just makes him look like Mr. Burns. Which is very fitting because they're both evil they're both evil people. <sighs> this might have to be the last one. I think we're hitting the a, a time I'm limit. I mean, there's no real timeline, but you know, I'm getting, getting to the end of my rope. Anyway. El elementary school counselor. Hey, champ, how's it going? What brings you in to see me? Me, H9. Well, you see, I think that the world is falling apart, maybe coming to some sort of end, but no one seems concerned, and everybody seems to be pretending not to see it. If anything, it's all a big partisan joke to them, and if the world is really is falling apart and the seas are turning to ass and boiling hang up and filling with plastic, that's really inconvenient to me because I'd like to study my own animals someday, and if they, they die off, I'm going to be out of career and pretty a, a cross about it. Also, I have no way of holding anyone accountable for any of this, so I've turned all that guilt and blame inward into perpetual self passion and also gen it makes me profoundly sad, but that's for another session. Elementary school counselor. So, would you say you feel more smiley or frowny more of the time? <laughs> being a child is existential horror. I mean, being an adult is also existential horror, but at least you're not a child. Well, they aren't wrong. Dang. That's some heavy stuff, kid. Alright, that's gonna have to do it for today. Today, we were tumbling. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So until then, goodbye!